September 480 BC, dawn broke over the island of Salamis and lit up with silver the narrow strait that separated it from mainland Greece. The tranquil sea provided no hint of the battle that was about to begin. By the day's end, the Mediterranean would flow red with blood. At stake was nothing less than the future and independence of Greece, a patchwork collection of islands and city-states which lay just outside the reach of the greatest empire in the then known world, Persia. Persia was the world superpower of its day, enormously wealthy, enormously self-confident, the greatest multi-ethnic, multicultural empire the world had seen. An invasion force of epic proportions was armed and ready just over the horizon. As many as 700 ships carrying 150,000 warriors intended to add Greece to Persia's many conquests. But one Greek hero was poised and eager to do battle with them. His name was Themistocles, an Athenian admiral and statesman who had been preparing for this moment for many years. But going up against Persia, the world's greatest superpower of the time, would be no day at the beach for Themistocles. Hello, I'm Peter Weller. First of all, the Greek naval fleet was outnumbered two to one. Second of all, Themistocles faced the almost insurmountable problem of trying to unite a completely disparate and contentious group of warriors into one command. You see, the good news about the civic development of ancient Greece was the city-state. Each of these city-states was sort of a self-contained, self-reliant mini-country within Greece. But the bad news about the civic development of ancient Greece was the city-state. Because inasmuch as each of these city-states sort of spoke the same lingo, worshipped the same gods, there was really no sense of a national unity. And their only priority was their own particular regional and cultural agenda. At best, they didn't get along. At worst, they were violently at each other's throats. If there was anyone who could hold all the Greeks together, it was Themistocles, a man who didn't come from the ranks of the aristocracy and wasn't ashamed to let his fellow Athenians know it. He was always an outsider, and he saw himself as an outsider, and he uh, prided himself on his lack of polish. Uh, he said that he might not know how to tune a lyre uh, or to sing well, but he knew all you needed to know to make a city great and free. Themistocles was no stranger to waging war against the Persians. Ten years previously, a smaller Persian force had invaded Greece for the first time and fought Athens and her allies at the Battle of Marathon. At this crucial moment, Themistocles could bring that experience to Salamis and focus his strategic thinking on a fatal flaw he detected in the Persian war machine, its navy. He understood that the water was not the Persians' natural element. Persia was a land power. In fact, Persian religion considered salt water to be demonic. Themistocles persuaded Athens to build a navy better than any other in the world. Work began at breakneck speed to launch a fleet of 200 triremes, the most lethal warships of the ancient world. Trireme's about 130 feet long. It's light and sleek, and it's tipped with a wooden ram covered in bronze at the water level, and that is the offensive weapon of the trireme. Might think of the trireme actually as a guided missile. The trireme contained 170 oarsmen rowing on three levels, 62 on the top level, 52 in the middle, and 54 at the bottom. On the lowest level, the rowers were seated so deep inside the hull that their oar ports were just 18 inches above the waterline. So you have a ship, a wooden ship, that is powered from the oars. It can go up to eight knots or nine knots, which is an amazing speed for the ancient world. And it can attack like a missile. And the rowers, of course, have to learn how to work as a team. They have to learn to row together in unison, which is an easy thing to begin to do, but a very difficult thing to master. Themistocles' fleet of triremes was completed in only a few years, and just in the nick of time. In the spring of 480 BC, Persia launched its invasion. 
Themistocles knew the Persian fleet outnumbered the combined Greek fleet almost two to one. So he devised a plan to keep the Greek ships united and level the odds. He had to turn a disadvantage into an advantage, the fact that he had fewer ships than the Persians. So he had to lure the Persians, if you like, into such a battleground that they could not advance the whole ranks. So he can actually concentrate their power and strike it. So the best place that he could do that was at the Straits of Salamis. So Themistocles laid a trap to lure the Persian fleet into the narrow Straits of Salamis. Themistocles was a very cunning man, a great trickster. Themistocles knew that the Persians preferred to win battles through diplomacy, through intimidation, and through buying traders. On the eve of battle, Themistocles sent a trusted servant across the straits and into the Persian camp. The servant played the role of traitor, telling the Persian commander the Greeks were in disarray and if the Persians sent their ships in the night, they could surprise the Greek navy at dawn. The Persians took the bait. And so at dawn, the Persians discovered to their shock that the Greek fleet, instead of being about to flee, was getting into battle formation and that they, the Persians, would have to fight. So it was a perfect setup of a battle by Themistocles. 200 triremes powered by 34,000 oarsmen formed up into a battle line. There was no room for the Persians to maneuver in the narrow straits. Themistocles had sprung the perfect trap. The attacks raged all day as the Greek triremes encircled the Persian ships, then pounded them with their forward rams. And the Persian officers died in unusually high proportions. The battle was so confused, chaotic, and unnerving that by the evening, the Greeks weren't even sure that they had won. But thousands of cold Persian corpses on the shores of Salamis indicated a decisive Greek victory. Some historical sources claim the Persians lost 200 ships and the Greeks lost only 40. Any Persians that didn't drown were slaughtered by Greek soldiers waiting for them.